and welcome back to Devlog. In the last part, I found a rare mystical wooden box and jeweled with mystical gem rolls that I had never seen before with waking eye. Ancient forgotten runes lined the side of the box. These translated to puzzles of increasing difficulty, all of which I was tasked to complete in order to open the box. As I finished the final kitty crossword on the box, a latch unhinged. It opened, a mysterious chanting could be held inside. I grasped the lid of the box, opening it slowly. Inside I peered, viewing this funny devlog. And welcome back to devlog, in the last part I worked on something and in this part I work on the pause menu and input remapping options. With the pause menu, the first thing to take into account is when the character can actually pause. This is pretty simple. Has the level started? Is the player dead? Has the level finished? Is the player... All of these things are taken into account, so... If the player is in a level, the level has already begun, the level hasn't finished, and the player isn't dead, you are allowed to pause. When pausing, all that happens is the time is set to zero, and a pause buffer is enabled to restrict player inputs in the actual movement scripting, so you can't have any speedrun-like tech where you perform inputs whilst paused. Once paused, the player can either resume the game, access an options menu, save and quit the game, or save and return to the hub. In the hub level, the player can do both these things, or they can save and quit to the title screen, instead of saving and quitting the game. The actual logic for each of these options is pretty simple. When pausing, we enable the pause menu's animator, we play an audio, and we set the time scale to zero, and we set the player's input buffers to accommodate for being paused. When resuming, we just do the opposite of these. We set time to one, we had the animation of the pause menu falling away, we trigger the player's input buffers, and we can resume and play the game. When saving and quitting the game, all we do then is make it so the player can no longer pause the game because we're in a transitional state of levels. We enable a UI to obscure the player and visual of the game, and then we just transition a level as we normally would, either going to the main menu or going to the hub level selection. Also when doing this, we save the game. The only really complicated thing in the pause menu is the restart level option. This is really fun, and probably useful if you're trying to get a really good record time on a level. This has the player explode. I found that adding a restart level button was easiestly done if I just have the button kill the player and reset the player's respawn point. So the button just makes you blow up. There was probably a more nuanced way I could have had a restart level button, having it just transition the player to the beginning of a level, but just having it kill the player is much, much, much easier. The timer also resets when you do this, so restarting the level really does restart from the very beginning and make it so you can just reset your level timer very simply if you want to go for a very fast finish of a level. Originally I was going to add a speedrun mode to levels, but just having the option to restart the level from the beginning very, very quickly, I think really accommodates for this tactic a lot easier than a speedrun mode would have. In terms of the level logic, this actually doesn't do anything. I mentioned that it resets the level time for speedrun times, but that isn't anything to do with the reset button. The reason the level time is reset is that by default, I have the player's level timer reset to zero when the player dies and respawns at the beginning of a level. The reason for this is if the player is running for a level and they die very immediately, I just don't count that as them playing the level because you're running reset to the first point in the level, you're technically not running through it anyway, so the timer resets. Although, there really isn't any hazards between the first point of a level and the first checkpoint of a level, so realistically it's actually impossible to normally notice this. Finally, we have the pause visuals. I'm just using the UI sprites that I'm using for a lot of UI sprite menus, which is going to be filled out with graphics from every single level as I currently add them, but currently just has a few graphics from the trash trail level, the one I'm currently working on, since no other levels are added yet. Additionally, I wanted the pause menu to be very chunky and cute, for multiple reasons, the first being that I like UI that you can actually see, and I feel like a lot of games have very small UI, 
and I don't like it, I want the UI to be big and chunky. The second reason is I think it looks cute, and the third reason is that I am very short-sighted, and I really like UI that I can see easily. Games where the UI is very tiny are a real bother to me. I'm not a big fan of it, I don't like the trend very much. I wish all UI was big and bulky and cute and very curved and very soft looking and big. Big UI, make the UI big. We also have an animation for the UI appearing and disappearing. This is just the UI stretching from the top of the screen, squishing down and landing cutely in the player's vision, and the UI dropping down below the screen once you have resumed. Very, very simple animations, very basic squash and stretch of the UI bouncing around, but I think this adds more personality to the pause menu showing up, in opposed to just fading overlaying on the screen. One thing that was really important to add to the pause system was the pause input buffer. This is to make it so the player cannot perform inputs when paused. The reason this is necessary is because the way pausing works is it just makes the game's time go to zero, essentially making it paused, but the game is still running. The issue with this is the player can still perform inputs even when time is zero, because inputs are performed every frame, and even though the game isn't running at a speed, it still has a frame rate, and therefore inputs can be performed. The very simple solution to this is meaning if player is paused, our inputs aren't going to run. We're just going to use a return function on whatever the player is currently doing, and we'll just ignore whatever functions would be running when the player is moving. However, there is one awkward issue with this. So we run the game, we pause with, let's say, the start button. We then unpause with the A button. The A button is also used for jumping, so at the same frame we unpause, we're then still pressing the A button, and the A button will be registered as an input, meaning whenever we unpause with the A button, the A button is also going to be used to perform a player input because we are no longer paused. So my solution for this was just to add an input buffer. This is whenever the player is paused, I will, instead of meaning that they can perform their player inputs immediately after being unpaused. I will wait for three frames. The game runs at 60 frames per second, so three frames is a very short amount, and sure I don't really have an issue in-game, but I will wait for three frames before the player can make any additional inputs, or before we register any inputs the player has made. So this means the player is unpausing with the A button, Three frames are passing. At this point, the A button has already been registered, and it was registered within these three frames, and therefore is ignored as an input. This means the player cannot perform any player inputs when paused. You can't make the paused buffer wind waker backwards swimming speedrun tactic in my game. <laughs>